Did you know that there is a shocking chapter of black history that has been systematically kept hidden from school curricula? Are you ready to uncover the untold stories of resilience, triumph, and injustice that have shaped the course of our world? Well, prepare to be astonished as you delve into this eye-opening video, where you will be introduced to these remarkable black historical figures who had a profound impact on global history. These individuals played crucial roles, from their discoveries and leadership of a community of liberated slaves to the establishment of a new settlement and land. Additionally, you will hear the inspiring story of a woman who fearlessly demanded respect for her rights during a period when women were generally overlooked and undervalued. The information you are about to discover will undoubtedly leave you astounded. Gaspar Yanga, the premier liberator of the Americas, led a successful slave uprising in colonial Mexico. Born on May 14, 1545, Yanga hailed from Gabon in West Africa and was captured, enslaved, and named Gaspar Yanga or Gaspar Nyanga. Working on sugarcane plantations in Veracruz, Mexico, he endured harsh conditions. In 1570, Yanga persuaded a group to revolt and escape, establishing the settlement of Palenque. This became one of the earliest free black communities, thriving under Yanga's leadership for over 40 years without Spanish interference. Yanga assumed roles of spiritual and military leadership, forming an effective agricultural community that grew and expanded. By 1609, their numbers exceeded 500 men, leading to rumors of a large-scale revolt against Spanish authorities. Yanga and his group, called the Cimarrones, posed a threat to the colonial slavery system, opposing royal commerce and authority. As their power and influence grew, warnings of a potential black uprising reached Viceroy Luis de Velasco. Initially dismissing the rumors, de Velasco ordered severe whippings for enslaved individuals already imprisoned for other crimes. The Cimarrones were implicated in disrupting trade and looting goods, targeting haciendas, farms, and the Veracruz Road, a crucial route linking the Gulf's main port to Mexico City. Yanga's band attacked nearby haciendas and kidnapped indigenous women, causing trouble for colonial authorities and disrupting the Viceroyalty's economic stability. The Spanish authorities decided to take action, aiming to destroy the settlement and eliminate Yanga to discourage further slave rebellions. However, the Maroons successfully defended themselves from hidden and inaccessible locations. The rebellion inflicted significant losses and disrupted the royal road, severely destabilizing the colonial authority. Realizing the futility and unprofitability of waging war against the Maroons, the Spanish authorities abandoned their efforts. In 1609, news spread that the Africans planned to kill the capital's inhabitants and crown Yanga as a king, alarming the viceroy. He then sent a well-armed militia led by Pedro González de Herrera, consisting of around 550 soldiers, to defeat Yanga and his palenque. Yanga's forces, comprising approximately 100 fighters with firearms and 400 armed with stones, machetes, bows, and arrows, used their superior knowledge of the terrain to resist the Spaniards. Yanga's strategy aimed to inflict enough pain on the Spanish forces to initiate negotiations. His plan succeeded, and he sent his peace terms through a captured Spaniard. Yanga proposed a similar deal to the one that had ended hostilities between the Indians and Spaniards, offering self-rule for the Maroons and their support as long as they were not attacked. However, the Spanish authorities were determined to continue the fight. Another group was dispatched to confront Yanga and his palenque resulting in fierce defense from Yanga's forces and heavy casualties on both sides. After several defeats, Yanga once again offered peace but presented the Spaniards with 11 conditions. The most crucial terms included recognizing the freedom of all Palenque residents prior to 1608, acknowledging the settlement as a legal entity governed by Yanga and his descendants, and prohibiting any Spanish presence within the community. In return, Yanga promised to serve and pay tribute to the Spanish crown. In 1618, after years of negotiations, the treaty recognizing the settlement as a free black community was signed in San Lorenzo de los Negros. By 1630, the town of San Lorenzo de los Negros de Saralvo, now called Yanga, was established in present-day Veracruz province. In 1871, Yanga was honored as a national hero and the first liberator of the Americas, around 50 years after Mexico gained independence. The story of Yanga was documented in an anthology published in 1870 by Vicente Riva Palacio, portraying the proud Maroons of San Lorenzo de los Negros who refused to be defeated. In the 1500s and 1600s, male Spanish conquerors dominated the historical narrative, settling in regions of New Spain and subjecting the indigenous Pueblo people to documented horrors. 
While the victories of Spanish conquerors are celebrated, there is a lesser-known history of women challenging Spanish authorities. One such influential woman is Isabel de Olvera, a free woman of African descent living in Querétaro, Mexico. She participated in an expedition to Santa Fe called the Guerra de Reza, serving as a servant to a Spanish woman. Isabel's remarkable deposition filed with the mayor of Querétaro played a crucial role in asserting her freedom and became a symbol of women's rights. Her affidavit remains a significant legal document in the historical archives of Mexico and the United States, representing the oldest recorded example of a black woman advocating for herself. Isabel's journey from Mexico to New Mexico, her understanding of freedom, and her determination serve as inspiration for countless freedom fighters. Despite her concerns about potential challenges to her freedom, she persevered. Her writings provide valuable insights into the lives of women during that era, showcasing their struggles within a patriarchal and Spanish-dominated system. Isabel de Olvera's story exemplifies the blending of indigenous American and African cultures, the construction of race in colonial North America, and the presence of black women in New Mexico since its earliest written records. Estevanico, also known as Esteban de Dorantes or Mustafa Azamori, defied the belief that Africans never explored beyond their lands. Born in Azamor, Morocco around 1500, he was the first African to venture into North America. He is described as an Arabic-speaking black man from Azamor. In 1522, he was sold into slavery and was purchased by a Spanish nobleman. Estevanico's upbringing as a Muslim in Morocco is uncertain, but he likely converted to Christianity to travel to New Spain. After embracing Catholicism and becoming Esteban, he joined the Narvaez expedition in 1528. Originally bound for Tampico, Mexico, they were blown off course to the western coast of Florida. Unsatisfied, they sailed north, vanishing and leaving Estevanico to lead a 300-mile march encountering Native Americans and hardships. After building boats and sailing west along the Gulf Coast, a devastating storm near Galveston Island, Texas claimed many lives, leaving only 80 survivors in 1529. Estebanico and two others were enslaved by the Capoque Indians in 1532 but eventually escaped. They embarked on an extraordinary journey serving as medicine men and spiritual leaders exploring present-day Texas, the southwestern United States, and northern Mexico. They covered 2,000 miles, becoming the first Africans and Europeans to venture into the American West from Florida. Their remarkable odyssey led them to a Spanish settlement in Sinaloa, Mexico, after traveling south from Mexico City. They were warmly received and admired, drawing large crowds as they moved between villages. Estebanico and his companions continued their journey through western Mexico, including the Sonoran Desert and Sonora in New Spain. By July 1536, they reached Mexico City after a thousand-mile southern trek. In 1542, La Relacion by Cabeza de Vaca documented their survival journey in Estevanico's life. It was the first publication describing inland North America and the American bison. Estevanico emerged as their leader, engaging with indigenous communities. In Mexico City, he was appointed as a guide for northward expeditions by the Viceroy. In 1539, Estebanico joined Friar Marcos de Niza's expedition to find the seven cities of Cibola. Serving as the main guide, he used crosses as signals to indicate wealth, leading the way. Tragically, Estebanico met his fate in Hawica, New Mexico, where he was reportedly killed in 1539. He became the first non-native to visit the Pueblo lands. However, he is celebrated as a renowned explorer, guide, and conquistador in historical and modern portrayals.